The 2020 NFL Draft was full of twists and turns, and as far as the Eagles were concerned, it may as well have been the entire draft class. But before absolute chaos ensued, the Eagles picked Jalen Rager out of TCU at pick 21. And some people scoffed at it, some people like myself were very excited about it. Today, we're kicking off our brand new Eagles Rookie Film Room Series. We're going to break down what makes Jalen Rager so special, and why I think he's going to be a star at the NFL level. Before we get started guys, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We will be bringing you film breakdowns on every single rookie drafted by the Eagles. So make sure that Philly Sports Network is your go-to place for Eagles content. And as always, on that note, make sure you're getting your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. Let's take a look at Jalen Rager, the player. The important thing to note is that he's 5 foot 11, so what many people to perceive to be a little bit undersized for a receiver at the NFL level and that is something we have to circle in red because it does pertain to a lot of what we're going to talk about. Another thing we have to talk about is the drop percentage because anytime a receiver is tagged with a drop rate of over 15% there's bound to be concern. However, his quarterback in 2019, thanks to some significant movement at the position, completed close to 50% of his passes, had 15 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. It was not pretty and 33% of the passes that went Rager's way were deemed uncatchable. And this is where the film breakdown is key. And many of you will remember that before the NFL draft, I uploaded a video showcasing the top 20 receivers that I believe to be the best fits for the Philadelphia Eagles. And outside of the top three of C.D. Lamb, Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy, Jalen Rager was my WR4 and he was conveniently fourth off the board. So I was feeling quite good about this pick anyway, but now it's time to prove why I gave him such a high grade in comparison to someone like Denzel Mims or Justin Jefferson. Let's start with his inside release here. Now you're going to see a corner pressed up against him at the line of scrimmage and what I really love about this is the quick freeze we see from Jalen Rager. Blink and you'll miss it. He powers his way around the cornerback and while the ball is overthrown, let's slow this down and just look at the intricacy of this release because it's mesmerizing. There's your jab step. At this point he wants the cornerback to open his hips throws his body weight back inside and he knows he's got the long speed and drives around the cornerback to get open. That's very hard to do. It's very Devontae Adams-esque and I don't want to say that loosely. I don't like pro comparisons, but he does it again here. And although that's against zone coverage, so it looks a little bit more electric, it's the same basic premise. If you're going to play off coverage against him, you can see the corner shaded inside there. Rager just blows by. He pushes up to that corner so, so quickly. But I think because of that raw speed, you miss part of what makes that route special. The corner here, he's trying to push Rager inside. So what Jalen does is get up on his hips so fast, points outside, forces the cornerback to account for it. And a second he turns again, just breezes by, just comes right underneath. The ball should be thrown there. It's a bit of a poor throw. Maybe Rager could have done better, but the actual route, is just terrifying. His long speed has come under concern. Some people don't buy the combine time, other people refuse to buy his virtual pro day time. But what you have to buy is what you see on tape. And just look at this deep speed. And what he does really, really well there, really, really well, is getting off the line using these high steps, these high jogs almost, to try and fall the cornerback into, hey, I'm not going full power, I'm going to break. And the second that corner begins to slow, he just goes full gas. He changes gears. That's the big thing. He's not a one speed receiver. He can change gears and press you in a hurry. Warning, this next route is very, very dirty and it may get you a little bit flustered. It's off coverage, he's going to run a comeback route, but he does three very, very saucy things on this play. So we're going to examine all of them. The first one is the release. He snaps his head inside and look how quickly he gains on the DB. The second the DB has to bite, Rager just cuts like that, just cuts, stops on a dime, very simply, then goes again after the stutter step and then rolls his hips. He sinks very, very low into that break. That's where his height helps him. There's part one. There's the initial stutter. The cornerback's up right. He's not moving. Then Rager pushes up to his face and just look at this one fluid motion. Sinks his hips, bursts out of that cut. It's so difficult to do, but the momentum gained is crazy. The separation is crazier. And what's even more crazy is the fact that the quarterback rolls out half of the NFL field. The nickel corner is able to then track back underneath, realizing the ball is only going one direction and takes away what would have been a sensational completion for the TCU wide receiver. This play for me 
Leeds sums up Rager's season. He lines up in the slot, sells a vertical, runs a corner out, high points of football and comes down with it like he's six foot three. That else would have been a touchdown had it not been for mildly incompetent quarterback play. But let's just look at this route slowly because he does something very impressive here. Now what we see is a linebacker come out and at this point Rager has to realise, hey, this is zone coverage. He knows his teammate is running a curl and that's going to leave him one on one with a safety that wants to take away that deep third of the field. So Rager there sells the vertical. He forces the safety to flip his hip and like a fisherman just starts reeling him in because now it is dead in the open water. There is no way Rager can't win this route. He bursts by him with an incredible amount of explosiveness, high points the ball, locates it well and somehow comes down with this in a way I really don't understand for a 5 foot 11 wide receiver. That should have been a touchdown throw. Somehow it wasn't but look at that catch radius. The hops he's got to get up there, bring it down with his hands. It's a very very good play on the ball and there's a lot to like there from the perspective of Jalen Rager. You see another example here. What Texas are going to do is actually bring a third safety into the mix and that safety is going to drop back and now Rager's got something to worry about because if he breaks over the middle on that post route he's done for. So he sells it, the safety bites and then he pulls up field. Again this should be a touchdown. It's not. It's somehow underthrown and it is absolutely infuriating but what we need to understand is that he's not just a speedster. He's not just a nine guy, although he can run a flyer out like you see down below. But he understands the intricacies of the game, the intricacies of the stem, and how to get open and use space and leverage to his advantage. Like here he uses a really nice fake outside move. You don't see it straight away. He wants to get onto the corner's toes, jab step, and just glide across him. And he does it so effortlessly and so many times he's overthrown. There's another example of speed in the stem in that game against the Cyclones and he just uses those gears to just try and come to a halt and there's much better coverage this time around. Fair play to the Iowa State Cyclones but just watch Jalen Rager again in the stem remain physical and absorb contact. He's not the most physical receiver but he will not shy away in the stem. He's more than just an elusive threat and this is why he graded so high on my rankings because he's not just a speedster, he's not just elusive, he will fight and he will battle. Now there are some concerns over the middle of the field where he can get out muscled by linebackers and DBs and there's sometimes almost a lack of willingness there but that's few and far between and that will be coached up and it may just be that he's not renowned as a body knocker or someone that's going to bang off of guys in the middle. Doesn't mean for a second that he can't leverage himself open, understand his frame and use that to his advantage like we see in a very big game against the Buckeyes. This isn't a secondary to be taken for granted. And what we haven't spoken about yet is just how dangerous this man is in open space. Let's put another feather in Jalen Rager's cap. Let's just see his ball carry vision and what he can do with the ball in his hands. Like, there he's at a standstill and the speed he gets to get outside is mesmerizing. So look at this against Ohio State. He's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Does he go for it or does he juke back outside? Take your guesses now. Again, this is someone we're talking about with a lot of speed. Does he have the vision? Of course he does. It's Jalen Rager. There's no two ways about it. He understands where to go, how to follow his blocks. For instance, Texas load up their defense to one side of the ball. It's a triple option read. Rager is going to flip to the outside and watch the pace in which he racks up here. It is like watching a car just hit the boost button, flies to the sideline, understands how to leverage the blocks, and it is just easy going. Here's another one. You can see a block that's pretty much losing there directly in front. He's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup inside, fights through it, finds the cleanest method to get extra yards. This is what you want, but stuff like that, I don't even need to analyse. That's just a terrifying move from a very, very talented, very spatially aware wide receiver. Now, he wasn't perfect, and there is a lot of work to be done on the screen game because TCU didn't use them that much, and there are some concentration drops with these at times, but when you watch things like this happen where he does fall forward, there is a willingness there. You can take that. You understand that this is a work in progress. He wasn't used here a lot, but he understands the basic mechanics of where to go with the ball in his hands. And frankly, that's all you're looking for in this sort of situation. It's all very well saying, yeah, but he didn't run too many screens and X receiver ran this money. But let's look at the context. How many of these screens did Jalen Rager do something like this? How many of those screens did Jalen Rager show that he's really effective with the ball in his hands in open space and in an offense with the offensive line this strong, with the blocking this talented, 
you're gonna end up eating up extra yards here. And I'm gonna save the best for last, because I was so pleasantly surprised by this. I mentioned at the start of the video, the guy's 5 foot 11. We know he can generate separation, but his ball tracking, his nose for the ball, and his catch radius are just unbelievable for someone his size. I didn't realize first time around watching this clip, he actually caught the ball. It's launched in the air, and just look at him track it over his shoulder, adjust his body, tiptoes in bounds, and continues to move forward. Look at this in the red zone. Nice little fade. Just leaps over the top. Look at the height this man gets. He's five foot eleven, and he can jump higher than me, probably. And I'm six foot three. It's terrifying. This guy can do everything, absolutely everything. There's another one just jumping in the air. He will not say no. He may be a bit shorter, but he will not not go up for a football. He'll always put his nose in. He'll always give it a fight. And again, that's simply everything you could want. Just watch the way he uses his hands to snag this out of the air. This is right where mum keeps the cookies. And like a misbehaving child, he just snatches it from the top shelf of the top cupboard. And then you've got plays like this. I genuinely am bewildered as to how this man didn't have more stock in him. Maybe the combine hurt his game. Maybe it was because the speed was a little bit deceiving. But what you see on tape is someone that is just a perfect fit for this offense. Someone that, let's look at this Eagles team. They couldn't implement Golden Tate. They couldn't get Nelson Aguilar on those screens open very often. They were throwing screens to all Sean Jeffrey for crying out loud. This is someone that can fill that void, that speed void that has been ripped away from this team. And while there are some concerns with body catching, like on this comeback here against OSU, for every little mistake like this or little drop that we have, you have the effort and the catch radius in plays like this in that very same game where he just goes up, adjusts to the ball, and comes down with it. So am I concerned at some of those reps? Well, there don't appear to be a huge amount of effort. Not really, because in the same game, he will go and do something absolutely ridiculous like this. This is a star receiver. This is someone that does have elite potential. And in an offense that is built to make players thrive in open space, he'll do exactly that. He's so good at finding the turkey hole like we see in this play here, just leveraging his space well to sink between cornerbacks. It's unbelievable. I'm so excited about this pick. This guy has everything the Eagles want and need in a wide receiver. That's why I had him as my fourth ranked guy on the board. I want to know what you guys thought though. Has this maybe shown you a different side to Jalen Rager because that's the aim or is there anything I've missed? Again, let me know in the comments guys. Thank you so much for all of your support here at Philly Sports Network. From myself, Liam Jenkins, you can follow me on Twitter at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you soon.